There is an amazing story behind the naming of our now familiar Bluetooth technology. Bluetooth was named after Harald Blatan Gormson, a king of Denmark and Norway who ruled during the 10th century AD and is credited with the unification of Denmark. His name was therefore chosen for the branding of Bluetooth technology due to his ability to unite people through peaceful negotiations a legend which was seen as appropriate for an integrated telecommunications system. The exact year of Harold's birth is not known, but traditionally thought to have been in 910 to 911 AD. Equally unknown is why his nickname was Bluetooth. Some historians believe that at least one of his front teeth had died and had become discoloured. The word blue also meant dark, perhaps describing the conspicuous bad tooth Another theory put forward was that Harold was quite partial to blueberries. His son was known as Forkbeard, so we can assume that nicknames were common then. Harold is famous for several big changes in Nordic culture, such as the introduction of Christianity and the first nationwide coinage in Denmark. He was born the son of King Gorm the Old and Queen Tira, who was the daughter of a nobleman from Sondjylland, which is Schleswig in modern-day Germany. Gorm the Old was the first ruler in a new line of Danish kings and had begun the unification of Denmark during his time in power. While Gorm was a devout worshipper of the Norse gods, Tira was more inclined towards Christianity, which may have contributed to the future king's favourable acceptance of this then foreign religion. When Gorm died, Probably around 935 AD, Harold assumed the throne and began his reign by continuing with his father's unfinished effort to unify Denmark. He was successful in doing so and then proceeded to bolster the defences of his kingdom through strengthening the existing fortifications and building additional ones in the form of Viking ring castles. He also constructed the oldest known bridge in southern Scandinavia, which was only discovered last century. As well as his building works, Harold adopted a policy of tolerance towards Christians. Whilst the majority of his population were followers of paganism, Harold viewed Christianity favourably. He did what he could to promote the foreign religion and even permitted the Christian faith to be proselytised throughout the land, resulting in widespread conversions of his subjects. Having achieved peace within his realm, Harold now turned his attention to outside of his kingdom. In 954 AD, Eric Bloodaxe, Harold's brother-in-law and the former king of Norway, was slain in battle during a campaign in Northumberland, England. His wife and Harold's sister Gunhild fled to Norway, taking her five sons. At that time, Norway was being ruled by King Hakon the Good, and Harold resolved to help his nephews regain the territory that should have been theirs. Harold's army was ultimately victorious, and the new king of Norway was declared as Harold II Greycloak, one of the sons of Eric Bloodaxe. However, come the assassination of Harold II Greycloak, Harold Bluetooth seized the opportunity to assert his own claim on Norway, and he subjugated the kingdom under his rule over several years. At around that same time, Christianity was becoming increasingly popular in Denmark and several districts in Harold's territory of Jutland were placed under papal authority. In those days, one particular monarch would be declared Holy Roman Emperor and it's thought that the then current title holder, the German king Otto the Great, made sure these dioceses were founded and also exempted from paying taxes to the Danish king. This may have caused the conflict that erupted between Denmark and the Holy Roman Empire, with the Holy Roman Emperor also wanting Harold to recognise him as his overlord. King Harold Bluetooth would have refused to do this, resulting in war. The Germans won in their war against the Danes, and Harold was then forced to accept his own baptism and the spread of Christianity throughout Norway. A strange story was recorded about the conversion and baptism of Harold himself through the practice of what was then called an ordeal. According to one contemporaneous historian, although the Danes were Christians by name, they continued worshipping idols according to pagan traditions. 
However, a dispute came about in the presence of the king during a meeting held regarding the worshipping of their gods. While the Danes present affirmed that Christ was a god, they were claiming that there were other greater and more powerful gods. Arguing against this was a certain cleric named Popo who insisted that there was only one true god. King Harold, described as a good listener, asked if Popo wished to bodily demonstrate his faith, to which Popo readily agreed. The king then had the priest guarded until the next day when he ordered a large piece of iron to be heated. He then demanded that Popo carry the red-hot metal, which he did, and as far as the king ordered. The priest then showed the gathering his unharmed hand, thus demonstrating to everyone his Catholic faith. At this, the king decreed that Christ was to be worshipped as the only God, ordering that all of his subjects were to renounce the idols and honour only the priests and servants of the one God. It was about a decade later, when the Germans were militarily involved in Italy, that Harold took the opportunity to attack and expel them from Denmark. Soon after this success, however, Harold's own son, Swain Forkbeard, revolted and Harold perished in a battle against his son's army in around 985 AD. However, Harold now lives on in posterity through his nickname, today known the world over, as it is also the globally recognised brand name of a wireless technology standard. Now with apparently 92% consumer awareness, the name was chosen due to the Viking heritage of the Swedish telecommunication company Ericsson's. While no one actually owns the Universal Communications Protocol, its founders felt that Harold Bluetooth's legacy provided an appropriate backdrop as Harold was such a uniting force in his time. The fact that many of us carry some degree of the seafaring Viking ancestry makes the name even more globally relevant. The Bluetooth logo was designed using a combination of two Nordic runes signifying his initials H and B. Although developed during the 1990s, its technology was based upon work that was created during World War II. Actress and self-taught inventor Hedy Lamarr is known to have patented the basic techniques for a more secure communication system in 1942. The principles of her collaborative work became incorporated into Bluetooth, wireless and GPS technology. Strangely, while much is known about Harold's life, it's only over the last decade that his final resting place may now be located. Researchers report satellites have revealed that the famed king possibly lies buried in a mound outside a small Polish village. A team of remote sensing researchers believes it may have solved one of history's most enduring centuries-old mysteries in northwestern Poland. Having discovered the huge mound, the team concluded that it was almost certainly built for the 10th century king near the same village where the Cumson disc and other Viking artefacts were uncovered in a crypt beneath an old church. A Latin inscription on the disc mentions the Viking king as being ruler of Danes Scania and the Viking fortress of Jomsburg. Polish army major had seized the hoard of artefacts in 1945 and the Kumsan disc had been kept in a box of buttons until 2014 when his 11-year-old great-granddaughter took it to school to show her history teacher. The disc is thought to have been a possible wedding gift to Bluetooth. Only an archaeological dig and DNA testing will be able to confirm that the site really is his burial mound.